Hey guys, let's get more news from Steelers, but first don't forget to subscribe to the channel and leave your like. Mason Rudolph is balling in Pittsburgh, former Super Bowl champion thinks Mason Rudolph is the difference maker. Mason Rudolph looks like a different player this time as the Steelers' starting quarterback. Former defensive back and Super Bowl champion Ike Taylor discussed Mason Rudolph's play with Mark Bergen on a recent Believe in Steelers podcast episode. People have to understand Mason was a dog at Oklahoma State. If you ask Mason, I am sure he might say he had an unfair shot when it comes down to his opportunities to either be a starter or a backup on the roster, said Taylor. He is taking advantage of his opportunity right now, and he is really comfortable with George Pickens and Deontay Johnson, and Pittsburgh is doing a good job with the dual coordinators learning how to mix up the running game and letting the running game turn into the play-action game. Rudolph has completed over 74% of his passes this season and has a 118 quarterback rating in four games since taking over for the injured Kenny Pickett. The Steelers are 10-point underdogs to the Bills this weekend, according to Bet Online. Mike Tomlin brought the 2023 Steelers back from the brink. Standing at the front of a ballroom in a Pittsburgh-area hotel on December 22, the night before facing the Cincinnati Bengals for the second time, Mike Tomlin delivered the message his team needed to hear. They were at their lowest point of the season after improbably dropping three consecutive games, including two at home to a pair of the league's worst teams. Questions about effort and leadership swirled. The third-string quarterback was taking over the starting job after three dismal outings from the backup, replacing an injured starter. The Pittsburgh Steelers were in a bad place, but Tomlin knew just what to say. His message was simple, yet impactful, scared money don't make money. The time to take chances is now, special teamer Miles Killebrew said, translating his head coach. Essentially, if you're going to do it, you may as well do it now. And that's exactly what the Steelers did, rattling off three straight wins as they followed their coach's message, buying into each other and taking calculated risks that paid off. He's our leader, and he sets the trajectory, and it's kind of his vision, our words, and we ride with whatever he's saying, we're selling it, interim offensive coordinator Eddie Faulkner said. That knack for saying the right thing at the right time, for consistently preaching a message that isn't a superficial speech, but one filled with meaningful directives that permeate the soul of his team is a quality that's endeared Tomlin to locker rooms throughout 17 years at the helm of the Steelers. This year, Tomlin's scared money motto is the latest iteration of his oft-repeated mantra, we're not living in our fears. And in a season where questions around Tomlin's leadership and ability to get through to his locker room churned outside the Steelers' facility, the coach shut down the naysayers by rallying his team from a 4% chance to make the postseason, per ESPN Analytics, to a wildcard matchup with the Buffalo Bills on Sunday afternoon, 1 p.m., CBS, beginning with that pivotal pregame speech. At that point in time, it was a red arrow around here pointing down, inside linebacker Miles Jack said. I think everybody kind of looked themselves in the mirror, kind of focused on their square and what they could do to be better. And as cliche as it sounds, it actually worked and we just started winning games. The Steelers responded to Tomlin with a convincing 23-point win against the Bengals, their first victory of more than one score this season. In his post-game news conference, Tomlin peeled back the curtain to reveal the team's mentality and referenced their new slogan for the first time. We came in with that mentality all week, he said, answering a question about Mason Rudolph's aggressiveness in the win. We talked about scared money not making money, and so that's kind of the mentality as we went into the week. They didn't stop there, rattling off two more wins against the Seattle Seahawks and Baltimore Ravens to a 10-7 record, securing Tomlin's 17th straight non-losing season and a playoff berth. He has a fascinating way of simplifying things that need to be said in a way that everybody can understand, Jack said. Normally when things are said, you kind of say, well, that doesn't apply to me. He's talking about somebody else. But everything that comes out of his mouth, you can definitely resonate with and look at yourself and be like, you know what? Damn, I could do that a little bit better. Or damn, I do need to focus on this or yeah, if I don't mess up, you know what I mean? He's good at keeping people accountable. Colts Michael Pittman Jr. will explore every option for future.
One of the biggest off-season storylines for the Indianapolis Colts will be what transpires between the team and their top wide receiver. Michael Pittman Jr. Pittman just finished his fourth season in Indianapolis and is set to hit the free agent market this spring. The 2020 second-round pick has established himself as the top receiving threat for a Colts team that seems to be heading in the right direction. As players were in the building to clean out their lockers before the offseason, Pittman stepped to the podium to discuss his future. Steelers is interested in hiring him if he become a free agent. As of right now until March whatever, I'm still a Colt, Pittman said. But speaking to the contract stuff, I made it this far so, I've loved my four years here, but I wouldn't be doing my due diligence if I didn't explore every option and find the best fit. Every option is still on the table for Pittman and the Colts. The two sides could agree on a long-term extension before free agency begins. The Colts could let Pittman test the free agent waters to gauge his value and risk the chance of him walking. The team could also use the franchise tag on Pittman, something the Colts have not done since 2013. As he enters free agency, Pittman owes it to himself and his family to evaluate all his options. He is a young, ascending player entering his prime and is sure to command interest on the open market. It has long been thought that the Colts would be smart to lock up their WR1 to a long-term deal before he reaches the market. But as of right now, the sides have not discussed an extension. Now that the season has ended, those talks are sure to begin. That does not mean, however, that Pittman does not want to see what else is out there before making a final decision. I think we want to get a sense of what's out there before, coming to an agreement, Pittman commented. We kind of had an agreement that we were going to wait until the season ended and kind of feel it out. There really haven't been any contract negotiations or offers just because we felt like it wasn't the right time. Whenever the right time is, I don't know when the right time is, I've never done this before. And you fan, what do you think of the Michael Pittman Jr. situation, leave your opinion in the comments.